God, thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for your promises. Thank you that you're with us here this morning. Lord, this morning we're, we're all over the map. Some of us in here are struggling. Some of us in here are on a mountaintop right now, Lord. But, but through your spirit, God, we ask that you would speak to us in the way that we need this morning. That we could experience you. That you would remind us of your gospel. And that God, more than anything, you would engage us through your Holy Spirit um, this morning. It's one thing to, to talk about your Spirit, but Lord, we ask that your Spirit would be with us this morning in Christ's name. Amen. So, uh, last week I got the chance to go up to Orlando with some of the guys from here. We, we went to the Exponential Conference, um, which is a, a church planting conference. And it's two days, they, they bring in these speakers from, from all over, these great speakers. They have you know, thousands of people there, all these different uh, breakout sessions you can go to. And so we went up, we like, piled in the middle of the up there, crammed in like a little Airbnb. They put me on a mattress in the, in the living room, but that's cool. Like, you've got duty, I get it. Um, and so, so uh, we had this awesome time. We were hanging out. Some of you guys probably know Andrew Lundy from Solace Church down in Boca. Um, he was up there with a, with a crew of his people. And we are hanging out one night talking to them just about the day and the stuff that we heard. And uh, he starts telling us about this documentary that they watched. He starts telling us about this documentary they watched the night before. And it was called Free Solo. I don't know if any of you guys have heard about this. It's, it's, a kind, of a, it's kind of popular right now. Um, but it's about this, this professional rock climber named Alex Holland and, and like what he attempted to do, um, which was to climb El Capitan in Yosemite National Park, which I think, yeah, we got a picture coming up here. El Capitan is, is 3,000 feet high. Perspective. like go out to climb this. People climb that all the time. He wanted to do something nobody else had done before. He, he wanted to free solo this. Meaning like no ropes, no partner, no, no safety net, nothing. Like he just went out and he wanted to climb this thing like you go climb the tree in your backyard. Which is insane. It's a crazy, crazy idea. So here's, here's a picture of him doing this. So we, we get back from Exponential. Uh, I, I come home and I'm sitting there with my wife and we're doing like the Netflix scroll where you're like, you want to watch that? No, that looks dumb. Like, I don't want to watch that again. We already watched, uh, we watched The Office like 9,000 times. Um, so I'm like, oh, like, they were talking about this, this documentary and so we pull it up and, and like, here, here's what I really love about my wife. Like, when, when she's in, like when she's in, she's, she's all in. <laughs> and so I had more fun watching her watch this documentary than actually watching it. Because she is like, she's like, my hands are sweating, I can't even look. She's, she's looking away, she's like, I'm going to throw up, I'm going to throw up. Like, they show that picture, she's like, I'm going to throw up on the couch. Like, <laughs> she, she, she's all in. And I'm like, my, my hands are sweating too, but I'm not going to say that. I'm like, it's not that hard. <laughs> I could do that. Like, total dude watching it. Like, I have long arms. I could, I could reach farther than he can reach. I, it's, not, it's not that hard. Um, but, but, like, this documentary is insane. And I know this is like kind of spoiler alert, but he, spoiler alert, he does it. He doesn't die. That would be a very awkward documentary. Um, but like, very sad. But he climbs this thing, like hanging onto these tiny little nooks, these tiny little cracks in this 3,000 foot wall, with like completely alone. Completely alone. And so as we like, as we continue to talk about, um, the Holy Spirit and, and living out our faith. Here's the reason why I tell you this story. Our faith, your faith is, is not a, a free solo climb. And here's what I mean by that. I think a lot of times in, in, in the church, we emphasize your, your personal relationship with Jesus and your walk with Jesus. And absolutely that's important. Yes, like, like we need that. We, you have to have that relationship. It, that's where your faith starts. But, but once you've come to faith, once you've put your trust in Christ... God has, not, God has not made us to like then just go off by our own and, and go out on this journey. Like he's, he's made us 
to be in community. We're called to walk in community and to shape Christian community, to be shaped by our community. But a lot of times, like I said, we, we're so focused on ourselves and our own walk that even like, like the picture of what, what like Christian success would be, a lot of times it's like, well, man, if I if I could, I could just get up, I wish I would get up early in every morning, and I would have I would have the most amazing devotional time, and I would I would like listen to all the Christian music, and maybe I'd even volunteer in church. Like that would be kind of like me doing it right. And, and we're so focused on ourselves, and I think we miss the fact that so much of Scripture points to us being one body. We're individuals, yes. We're individuals made in the image of God. You are designed to be in one-on-one -on -one community with God. But it's not just that. We're designed to be individuals made in the image of God who come together to form the church. And so this morning, um, we're, we're going to talk about sort of the, the special way that, that God says that he is with us as we gather. Like sort of a theme of the community, um, the special promises that God gives us in the way that we gather. So the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is at work in us both individually and in community. This is, this is a both and thing, right? Like, we need, our, we need our individual time with God, we need our individual faith, and yet we need to come together as well. It's, bo it's both and. We, we're not designed to have one without the other. And so last week, Casey sort of like, he, 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 we dove into, what does it look like to engage the Holy Spirit individually? Like those spiritual disciplines, you know, meditating, time in prayer, fasting, worshiping, all those things that we can and should engage in individually. Well, this week we're going to sort of be on the other side, where what does it look like to be in a community of people who are, who are doing those things together? Like what does a spirit-filled community look like? Okay? Um, because we see Jesus did both, right? Jesus spent a ton of time in community, most of his time in community with his disciples, teaching them, instructing them, being with one another. There's also times we see that he rose up early in the morning and went away alone by himself. Okay, so it's a both and thing. And as we talk about sort of how we're filled with the Spirit, we need to remember that at salvation, like we all are given the Spirit. We're all given the Holy Spirit inside of us, and yet we see these specific times in the New Testament where, where it says that certain people are, are filled with the Spirit. So to be filled with the Spirit is something extra, something on top, like an, an overflowing abundance of the Spirit. And so we're going to talk about how that is worked out in community this morning. We're going to look at Acts chapter 4. Um, and as we kind of pick up in Acts chapter 4, it's always important, like, like whenever we get into Scripture, we've got to understand the big picture of like where, where we're going to dial into like one verse specifically today. But what, is that, what does that verse mean? What's happening in Scripture? What's happening in God's story? And so this is Acts chapter 4. This comes right after the Gospels, like Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Um, and so Christ has just been raised from the dead. He's just been raised from the dead, and that's the best news ever. Right? Because, because before this, we're dead in our trespasses and our sins. Before the resurrection of Christ, we're dead in our trespasses and sins. The Bible says that we are all sinners. We're, we're born, it's something we're born with. It's also something we choose. We're, we're clear on that. I don't have to explain how, how all of us have, have chosen sin in our life. And here's what sin does, is, is it disqualifies us from knowing God. It creates a separation and a barrier because God is holy and perfect and righteous and now we are, we are sinners. We're, we're criminals against that holy God. And, and the Bible says that the punishment for our sin, like, like the punishment for our crimes is death. Because God is so holy, to sin against a God that holy, the punishment must be severe, which is death. And so as we pick up in Acts, Jesus has, has just died and risen again. Because Jesus came down, he, he, that separation, that's not okay with him because he loves us, right? And so what he did was he came down and lived the perfect life. He wasn't born sinful because he was full of God. And he, he didn't choose sin in his flesh. Like, he, he went to the cross, a, a, a 
spotless lamb, like a perfect sacrifice, totally sinless. And yet, that, that sinless party took on death. And we know that death is reserved for sinners. Like, like death is what we deserve. And so he, he goes to the cross, he absorbs our death undeservingly, and he pays for it. And then three days later, he, he literally, physically rises from the dead because he's God, showing that he's more powerful than sin and death. That even that great penalty of death that we deserve, that separated us from God, cannot hold him down. And so this, is, this has just happened. Like, Jesus has just been raised. These people have seen it happen. He's come to them, like, in his, in his resurrected form and had conversations with them. And so these guys are amped. Like, like the, the light bulb's just coming on. He, he's given them the Holy Spirit, like we talked about. And so there's a lot going on here in Acts. And so as we pick up in uh, chapter 4, we see uh, Peter and John. Peter and John. And they are arrested because they're, they're preaching Jesus. They're, they're going around preaching the, the resurrection of Christ, what they've seen, what they've experienced. And they get arrested, thrown in prison, and brought before um, the council. It's called the Sanhedrin, which is actually the same council that, that Jesus was brought before. So just a, just a little while later, Peter and John are, are called before the council because they've, they've been preaching Christ, and the leaders, the rulers, are not okay with that. And so they say, look, like... like they know what just happened to Jesus right after he went before that council. They're before the same council, and they say, you guys need to stop. You need to stop preaching Jesus. It's heresy. Okay, and then, and then they, they, they release them, because at that moment there was, no, there was no punishment that they could give them, and they release them on the terms of, like, you, you cannot go preach Jesus anymore. And there's this, there's this awesome verse that it says, like, look, we, their response to the, to the council, they say, we, we cannot do anything else. Like, I can't do anything but preach about what's happened in my life and what I've seen, which is super, super powerful. But so they release Peter and John, they release them, they immediately go back to their Christian brothers and sisters. They run back to their community, right, and they immediately go to God in prayer. And so what we're going to look at this morning, I'm going to read... Um, about eight or nine verses, which is that prayer. It's that, that those people gathered together right after their brothers come back, after being arrested. They're, they're told, don't preach the gospel or else. And now they're, they're all together, huddled in this room, praying this prayer. I'm going to read the prayer. It's not going to come up on the screen. Um, and then the very last verse is where we're going to hang out today, what we're going to talk about. So this is what Acts 4, uh, verse 23 through 31 says, And when they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and elders had said to them. And when they heard it, they lifted their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the earth and the sea and everything in them, who through the mouth of our father David, your servant said, by the Holy Spirit, and this is a, this is a, a quotation from, from Psalm chapter 2, they're praying scripture. They say, Why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings and the earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. For truly in this city they were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus. In this city, against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and all the peoples of Israel, to do whatever your, your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, there's this transition, now, Lord, look upon my threats. Grant your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness, while you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through your name of your holy servant, Jesus. In verse 31, this is where we'll, we'll stay today. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God in boldness. So that's, that's kind of an intense prayer, right? That, that's a big prayer, but I think it's important. Like, a lot of times when we see in Scripture, prayers start out, like, really big. And so this prayer starts out really big, and they say, Sovereign Lord, 
Like, uh, remember, their, remember their circumstance, what, what they have going on. Sovereign Lord, Lord, you created everything. You, you're the king over everything. Your servant Jesus, like whom, whom you anointed, you knew exactly what was going to happen to him. You were sovereign over that. And then there's that transition. And they say, therefore, like we, we bring these, this situation that we're into you. These threats that we're facing, um, this, these circumstances, these problems that we have, God, we bring them to you since you're sovereign and you're in control. They don't, they don't pray that, God, God would, you, would you change the law? Would you, would you help those guys to sort of calm down? Would you, would you just transport us and make us more comfortable? Um, or, no, they, what do they pray for? They pray for boldness. They pray for boldness in the face of, of like, intense persecution. They weren't surprised by persecution. Instead, they prayed for, like, a gospel boldness, which is a, that's a big prayer. That's a big prayer. I think that's a powerful prayer. And so I'm going to read one more time this, this last verse where we'll be today. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit <clears throat> and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. And the reason why we're going to be here is because th- this is a great example of what a, like a community of people in the Spirit looks like. Remember, this isn't like an individual, how, how is your personal time with God, like those spiritual disciplines, that's absolutely important. That's what Casey talked about last week. We're talking about the community, like, like a, a, a group of Christians who are together filled with the Spirit, because that's important, because we're not, we're not off on a solo climb. We're not doing this on our own, but we bring it into community. And it's important to note that this, like Acts is, the book of Acts is, it's a story, like it's narrative. It, it's, it's describing what happens. It's a descriptive passage. It's telling a story. It's not prescriptive. And what, what I mean by that is like, this, this, this message is not a, hey, we're going to do four things, and if you do one, two, and three, then number four will happen. Like, that, that's not what it is. It's, it's a description. And so um, all we can do is we can observe this passage, and, and we can come to some, like, the realization of some healthy patterns. Observe some, like, gospel-centered things that they did, and man, let's... Let's be like that. Like, if we're going to be like any church, let's be like the church in Acts. Okay? Um, so we're going to look at four uh, different areas sort of through this verse. Um, and we're going to talk about presence, practice, power, and proclamation. Number one, presence. It says the place in which they were gathered. So like the act of gathering. So, so getting together, doing what we're doing right now, like getting together matters to God. It matters that, that us as individuals come together as the body. Hebrews 10, 25 says this. Let us consider how to stir one another up in love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day drawing near. Like, like don't neglect. Like, there's going to be reasons why you're going to not want to get together. Don't neglect to get together. It's important that we're present with one another. Matthew 18, 20 says this. For where, Jesus says, For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. Jesus says, Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. And so like Jesus is God. He, he understands that God is omnipresent. Like God's everywhere. Jesus is everywhere. And so when he says this, he's saying, Look, there's... There's like something different about when you gather in my name. I'm among you. Jesus is everywhere, but I'm among you in a special way when you're gathered in my name together. And so as we we gather and we lean in to sort of the promises of God, trusting and expecting that God is going to meet us when we gather, that's how we talk about this this shift in the culture from, from just attendance to expectation. It's not just getting together to be together, but it's gathering, expecting, and, and trusting and leaning on the promises of God that he says he's go, he is with us right now in a special way that he's not when, when we're on our own. Okay, there's something special about the presence, about gathering together. Number two, practice. Practice. And when, 
It says, and when they had prayed. So, so what we do when we gather, it, it matters. It, it matters what we do. It matters to God. And um, this is not limited to prayer. In this passage of Scripture, like they, they're gathered in the upper room and they, and they pray together. But it's not limited to prayer. See, we talked about spiritual disciplines, praying, fasting, reading the Bible, um, serving, giving, all those things. When we bring those things into Christian community, we get to experience God's presence in a new way. And, and this is huge. This is, this is big. Like, that's what being a church is about. That's what, that's what like a, a functioning body looks like. It looks like our women's study on, on Wednesday night when they're fasting together. When they're, when they're the body of Christ together, practicing spiritual disciplines together, fasting. DNA groups, like, like DNA groups meeting together, studying scripture together, praying for one another, laying hands on one another. It, it's showing up early to the Bible study here to, to like dive into scripture with your brothers and sisters before church. And like I, 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 I could have walked through I took two steps inside the door this morning when I got here, and there were people with their hands on me, praying on me. <laughs> that's amazing. That, that's what this is talking about. When we take spiritual disciplines and we bring them into community, we exercise them together. That, that's what a culture is. One of the things I love about the Avenue Church, um, having been here for, you know, just not, not too long, but one of the things I quickly sort of noticed is, like, there, there's like a, and, and maybe, Maybe this, maybe this is more to my um, experience, but I, I, I'm safe to say that it's true. There's like a, a, a let's pray about this culture. And what I mean by that is like, I feel like I'm part of conversations or I hear conversations happening all the time and it's like, man, you know, I'm, I'm struggling with this or, or this was tough. And, it's, and there's just a, hey, well, well, let's stop right now and let's, let's actually pray about that right now. I'm going to pray for you right now. <laughs> and at first I was like, well, That'd be weird. <laughs> but it's, it's awesome. Like, like that, that culture of like, we're going to bring that before God right now. We're celebrating something amazing that's taking place. Man, let's, start, let's pray about that right now, right out here in the hallway. Like that, that's where culture happens. It's important to like that we preach culture and, and say culture from the stage. But, but that, that culture of bringing these disciplines together, it happens way more in the lobby out there as we interact with one another than it does when I'm preaching. It happens way more when you're meeting somebody at Starbucks and hanging out and praying with them and studying scripture. Way more when you're at home with your family than it does here. Like it's, it's important that that's where culture is shaped. And so this, this prayer in Acts chapter 4, we see the body of Christ unified together crying out to God for boldness. And that's a powerful prayer because, like I said, they're not, they're not praying for a change in circumstance. They're praying that they would be filled with the Spirit um, to proclaim the gospel. That's a big prayer. Most of the time, I don't pray big prayers. <laughs> Most of the time, I pray, like, me prayers about what I have going on and about, you know, things that are coming up for me. And God, I'm preaching, and help me to do well. And Lord, I want to do this, and, and would you help this situation in my life? Like, it's easy for us to become focused on ourselves. But like I said, man, we see, we see big prayers prayed often in Scripture. Somebody challenged me one time and said, if God, if God, um, if God right now, like, answered all of your prayers, just the way you asked, like, boom, would... Would your life change a lot, or would the world change a lot? And I was like, I'd probably, have, I'd probably be pretty good, but I'm not at all sure that, that that world would be much different, <laughs> much less the world. And, and if all the prayers that we prayed about, about church were answered, would, would the Avenue Church be like the most amazing church in the world? Or would like the Capital C Church, Church United, would, would people all over the world be coming to know Christ? See, we, we eat, we, we're, we're focused on ourselves, we're focused on our little worlds, and I think God often calls us to lift our eyes from that, to lift our eyes to who God is, to the fact that he's, he, he is that sovereign king that they prayed to. He is the maker of heaven and earth, and he was sovereign over 
over everything that's been done, over Christ and any sign over this situation. And so as, we, as our eyes are lifted, I think that our, our prayers are lifted as well, um, which is a, a powerful, powerful thing to, to be with one another, crying out like it, it, together in unison to God. Lord, Lord give, us, give us boldness for your glory. That's, that's powerful. That's a powerful prayer. Number three um, is power. Number three is power. It says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit. See, the only, the only power that we have to change, the only power that we have to, to even know God at all comes from the Holy Spirit. So there's this Francis Chan quote that I love. Um, Francis Chan says, I don't want my life to be explainable without the Holy Spirit. I want people to look at my life and know that I, that I couldn't be doing this in my own power. Like, like that's, that's what we want for the Avenue Church. That's what we want for the, church, for the entire church. Like, like just a, a crying out to the Spirit, God, do something that I can't do. Do something that I can't do. And like I said, that, that filling of the Spirit is not, it's not a one, two, three, four. It's not like do this, this, like gather together, pray together, and be filled. Boom. No, like, like we, I, I, we can't act for God. All we can do, like we talked last week, is we can, we can set our sail. Like if the Holy Spirit is the wind, and we can't control the wind. But we can gather and we can expect and we can beg for the wind. Because we serve a God who, who it seems like when, when his people cry out together and beg for more of him, that he loves to give us good gifts and that he loves to answer that prayer. And, and so, so that, that setting of ourselves is what we can do. That, that's how we gather. They're together, crying out to God, Lord, Lord, for your glory, which I think is huge, for your glory, fill us with your spirit. We trust, we expect on the promises of God, and he works. The Holy Spirit works in all kinds of ways. When, when oftentimes I feel like the Holy Spirit in my life has worked through other people, I can remember uh, when I first started coming here to the Avenue and I started meeting with the DNA on Thursday morning with Mitch and Brady and John and Don and, and these dudes are awesome. And so um, we're hanging out on Thursday mornings. We're, we're talking about our lives. We're studying through scripture, um, just in, sort of in that community. And a couple weeks in, uh, they, we were going around in a circle and, and sort of saying like, Man, how are you guys doing? What's going on? Is there anything we can pray for? And I said, well, you know what, like, I'm a little stressed out right now. <laughs> like, I, I didn't sleep super well last night. Um, I feel like there's all these different things going on. So my solution was, hey, will you guys just, like, sort of pray that things get worked out or, or like, pray that I'm, I'm less stressed? That'd be super nice. <laughs> like, that's my meat prayer, you know? Um, and so then but they started asking me questions, like, well, well what are you stressed out about? I'm like, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm starting this new thing at the Avenue, and, and it's new, it's different, and, you know, it, it's like, I, I think it's the right thing for me to do, and I, and I hope it is, but, and so they're like, there's that over there, and then, you know, it's just a lot of stuff, like our, our lease is up, and I'm like, should we, should, 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 I'm like, should we renew our lease, like, should we be working at a different apartment, should, we, like, you know, so there's just like all these different things, and I'm super stressed out, and I'm not sleeping well, so, Pray that they would all get worked out and that I would sleep great. That's my that's my Sam Power solution. And, and but as they continued to ask, like, well, why do you think that stresses you out? And I, I can remember, I'm like, I told Mitch like six times. I'm like, dude, dude, I just told you, like, there's all these things and I, I can't control them. And he's like, well, why do you, why why do you want to control them? I'm like, well, be, come on, Mitch, like, because I want to control them. You know, and see, Mitch, Mitch saw something in that circumstance that I, that I didn't see at all. See, my, my, like, it was exposing my desire for control. My desire that I had, to, I had to be in control of everything. I had to work this situation out and this situation out. And once they were worked out, then I could have peace. Does that sound like the gospel? No, man, but I didn't see it. I just wanted to sleep better. <laughs> and so these guys, like, like, they gospeled me and they prayed over me and they said, man, like, that, that's... That seems like it might be like a, a trust thing. Because who's in control? <laughs> God's in control. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but like, I, ha I had no idea. But once I brought that into community, and my brothers in Christ 
saw that and began to like love on me and ask me questions and then pray for me, man, that changed, that changed my heart. Like, and we did the new release, and it was fine. <laughs> we were my apartment. But like, that, that's so much more than like a tough circumstance story now. That's like a place where sin is exposed and the gospel was applied through the Holy Spirit working in community. And see, this, this, this like idea of, of Christian fellowship, it's not, just, it's not just like a nice principled way to live and have other people speak into your life. And Christianity is not just like a worldview that works out well. It, it's lived out through the power of the Holy Spirit, like the living and active God inside of the hearts of sinners who don't deserve to be in relationship with him. Okay, and we can't lose sight of that. And as we focus on ourselves, I think we start to lose sight of that. So the more things, the more places that I have in my life that I'm engaging in community, that I'm constantly being reminded and being preached the gospel, having the gospel applied to my life, man, I need that. I need that community often. I'm a terrible solo climber in my faith, right? But I'm, de- I'm not designed to be a solo climber. I'm designed to be in community. And so the last, last, the fourth section is, is proclamation, that boldness. It says, and they continued to speak the word of God in boldness. Three times in this chapter, in Acts chapter 4, you see, you see the word boldness. And, it, and it's associated with the filling of the Spirit in this context. Like, they're filled with the Spirit in that moment, and the result is boldness. The result is boldness. Like I said, they didn't pray for better circumstances. They didn't pray those shallow prayers. They prayed gospel prayers. And as the gospel takes root, like, as the gospel takes root in our hearts and begins to change our heart, it, 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 goes from, it moves from internal to external. As the gospel advances in our hearts, it begins to advance in the world externally. But, but we've got to have the gospel seen and applied in our hearts first. And here's the cool thing about the Holy Spirit and that, that proclamation, the boldness of Jesus, is it is always about Jesus. It's always about Jesus. That's like a, that's like a great way for us to tell if it's the work of the Spirit or not, is does it make much of Jesus Christ? Does it celebrate Jesus? Because if it does, that seems like the work of the Spirit um, to me. And that's what happened in Acts 4. They're not praying with the motivation being their comfort. They're not praying with the motivation being safety um, or, or reputation. They're praying with the motivation of, of like Jesus' boldness, that they would go out literally into the streets and begin to preach something that was illegal and that they would be arrested and probably killed for because of Jesus. They're not worried about themselves. Jesus is what makes um, that boldness a reality. The Holy Spirit makes much of Jesus all the time. And so as we talk about um, Vision 2020, and, and you know, we want to see lost people come to Christ, we want to see the amount of Christ followers in South Florida double, like, like we, that's, that's what we want. We're expecting God to do uh, great things. We're expecting God to fulfill His promises. That, that doesn't happen with a lot of solo climbers having great Devo times. Like, that's important. We all need that, but it's both and. It happens as we do that, and then we bring that into community. We bring those same spiritual disciplines that we practice individually, and we practice them together, trusting that God is among us in those times. Um, And just so quickly to recap, I think I've got um, the the four here. Presence. We we gather together. We physically get together. That's important. God is with us in a special way. He's among us. We practice those spiritual disciplines. We, we do that together as a family. We, we set our sail for the wind, expecting and trusting on the promises of God that he will fill us with his Holy Spirit because when, when we pray those big gospel prayers, I, just, I think God likes them a lot. I do. I think he does. And then proclamation. Like we become a church on fire, bold for Jesus Christ, bold to see his gospel advance, not to see the name of the Avenue Church made big and bright and everybody knows about it, but to see the name of the gospel and Jesus Christ made famous. Right? That's what we mean when we talk about engaging in a culture, in a church that loves Jesus. Engaging with a culture that's on mission 
We do it individually, but now we've, we've got to do it together. And we've got to do it together a lot. Um, so as we, as we kind of, um, as we kind of, we're going to end today a little bit differently. I was, I was thinking about this, and I, I mentioned it to Casey, and he, he mentioned it to me, and I was like, that might be a terrible idea, but I'm going to do it anyways. Um, th- there's a lot of time in our, uh, there's a lot of time in our services for somebody to stand up here and to speak, and that's important, and we need that. And there's a lot of time for us to worship together and hear music being played, and that's important, and we need that. Um, but, but as we, like, man, we're talking about gathering together, practicing spiritual disciplines together, praying together. Like, what, can we just do that? Can we, can we, I want to spend the last five or ten minutes praying together as a church, unified, crying out to God. Just, like, we, we read about it in Acts, and that's great, but let's, let's do it. Um, I, heard a, I heard a speaker one time say, he was from India, and he, and he was talking about the church in America, and he said, you know, the church in America is really good at talking about stuff. And it's kind of like that kid who, who uh, comes to dinner and his, his dad says, hey, tomorrow I need you to clean your room. And they come to dinner the next night and he says, hey, did you clean your room? And he goes, well, I, I gave you a, a, I wrote you a paper on how to clean your room and different methods on cleaning your room. And I studied how they clean rooms um, in Europe and how they clean rooms in North America. He's like, yeah, but did you, like, did you clean your room? So like, we can, we can talk about these things, we can study them, we can explain them, but like at the end of the day, let, let's do them. Let, let's do these four things together. So I want to enter us into um, a time of prayer. The, the band's going to come out and we're going to, we're just going to spend a couple minutes in prayer. Um, I'm going to give us three sort of topics to pray over. And I would encourage you, um, you don't have to do this, but I would encourage you to pray with somebody next to you. I would encourage you to pray out loud. You don't have to. You can just sit there and pretend like you're super deep in prayer and nobody will know the difference if you want to do it alone. Um, but I think there's something about that gospel boldness, okay, to step out of our comfort zone, to do something a little bit different, to pray with one another. Let, let's, let's like fill this room with, with the prayers of the saints, like crying out to God, asking to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, and so for, for just a minute here, for the first section, I, I want us to start with sort of like a big prayer, like we see throughout Scripture. We're going we're to start big, and we're going to sort of bring our circumstance to God at the end, like, the, like they do in Acts. So for about two minutes, I encourage you again, pray with one another, pray out loud, but let's just let's, let's pray together. Let's, let's praise God for who he is in this first section. And I'll transition us in between three sections and I'll close us out. But for a minute, two minutes, let's praise God for who he is. Thank him for what he's done. Let's remember how big our God is. Tell him how amazing he is. Let's, let's, let's like pray the gospel to ourselves. So they're going pl- to they're gonna play some music. And right now for two minutes, let's... Let's pray with one another. It might be awkward, but let's just love the awkward. Okay?
our time, and um, you guys are encouraged more than welcome, obviously, to continue to pray with one another. But let's let's pray together, Father. God, we're just thankful that 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 you love us, God. That you that you allow us to to know you, to be made new by you, and then you adopt us into your family. So God, I pray that, that you would fill us with your spirit, that we would run hard after you individually, but not, not alone, God, we would bring that into community. Lord, thank you for your grace and, and the fact that you're sovereign and the fact that you're in control and you know exactly what's going to happen today and tomorrow. So Lord, help us to, to rest in that. But we lift up South Florida. We, we pray that for your name's sake, that, that people would come to know you. I pray that people in this room would be filled with, with Holy Spirit boldness to go out into the world, to people they know who are far from you, and to bring the gospel in whatever way that means in those situations. God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your promises and your truth. Thank you for your gospel. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Hey, listen, we're going to have... Um, we're going to have... We're going to have our prayer partners down front if you'd like to continue to pray or have something you'd like to be prayed over for. Um, and last thing is, is, you know, we talked a lot about community today. And if, if, if you've not engaged in the kind of community we're talking about, out in the lobby there's, there's all these different uh, tables set up and ways that you can get involved, ways that you can get plugged in um, to the community that we have here at the Avenue Church. Love you guys. Thank you for being here. Have a great week.